Here's an integral that seems pretty well rooted. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of dx divided by square root x plus square root x plus square root x and so on and so forth. So you're just adding square root of x's inside of square root of x's and it's pretty fascinating. It's a pretty fascinating structure to look at. We've got an infinitely nested, uh, we've got infinitely nested square roots of x and the result is pretty surprising. I mean, the first time I evaluated it, uh, I was taken by surprise. I mean, the result was beautiful. The solution development was pretty satisfying in how simplistic it was. And the result was, was like striking pure gold. So without further delay, we're going to call our integral i for reference purposes. And I'm going to take this monstrosity in the denominator, that is the square root of x plus the square root of x plus the square root of x, and so on and so forth. And we're going to let it equal to some other variable, we'll call it y, but no, wait, that's too boring. So we're going to call it zeta. Why? Because we're sickos. So anyway, uh, we're calling the structure zeta, and if I square both sides of the equation, then I'm just going to get rid of this outermost square root, correct? And on the right-hand side, I have zeta squared. But notice one thing. What about this structure left here? It's still the square root of x plus the square root of x plus the square root of x and so on and so forth. So this is still our zeta boy. So this implies that x plus zeta equals zeta squared. And this is a quadratic equation in zeta, correct? So we have zeta squared minus zeta minus x being equal to zero. So we have this quadratic equation in zeta, in the zeta world. So we're going to apply the quadratic formula. Yes, you heard me right. We're actually going to use the quadratic formula. So all those memes about, you know, waking up to another beautiful day where you never have to use the quadratic formula. Joke's on you. Okay, so zeta equals negative of the, uh, sorry about that negative of the coefficient of this linear term, that is negative 1, so you have a positive 1 plus or minus the square of negative 1, which is 1, minus 4 times the coefficient of the quadratic term, which is 1, and the constant term, and negative x is a constant in our zeta world. So dividing by 2 times, again, 1, which is 2, so we have 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4x divided by 2 being equal to zeta. But which one of these square roots do we need? Well, x here lies between 0 and 1, as in x belongs to the open interval containing 0 and 1. Uh, the open interval between 0 and 1, that is. And we define zeta to be uh, the square root, the positive square root of all of this, right? So zeta is the positive square root here. And with x being greater than 0 and all, you can't have uh, the negative square root because then you would have 1 minus something greater than 1, right? So that would give you a negative answer. And that goes against the way we defined our zeta variable. So that means you only need the positive square root, which is pretty damn cool. So erasing all of this to give myself some writing space. Uh, we have zeta being equal to 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 4x divided by 2. And this means our integral is extremely simple to evaluate. I mean, we had the integral from 0 to 1 of dx divided by that zeta structure. And that zeta structure just sorts out to the reciprocal of the zeta, uh, the zeta variable, that is, is just 2 divided by... 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 4x. And I can solve this using a very nice substitution by just letting the square root of 1 plus 4x equal to u. And this implies that 1 plus 4x equals u squared, which further implies that 4dx equals 2u du, which implies that dx equals u by 2 du. So our integral transforms quite nicely. So we're left with the integral from where to where exactly? Well, as x approaches uh, 0, as x approaches 0, u will approach the square root of 1, which is 1. And as x approaches 1, u approaches the square root of 1 plus 4, which is square root 5. So we have the integral from 1 to square root 5 
Uh, and we have this factor of 2 here as well, can't forget that. And the differential element transformed into a u by 2 term, so the 2s cancel out again quite nicely. And I got rid of the integral, uh, the integral operator there, sorry about that. So we have u du divided by 1 plus u. And we can expand using a 0, and the fancy version of 0 that I want to use in the numerator is plus 1 minus 1. And this means that you have a very basic structure to evaluate the integral from 1 to the square root of 5 of 1 minus 1 by 1 plus u du, which sorts out to u minus the natural logarithm of 1 plus u, with the limits being 1 and the square root of 5. So as u approaches the square root of 5, you get square root 5 minus log 1 plus the square root of 5. And as u approaches 1, you get 1 minus the logarithm of 2. All right, all right. So this means I have square root 5 minus 1 minus log 1 plus square root 5 plus log 2. So I can just factor out a negative 1 here. Write it in this manner. And again, using the properties of the natural logarithm, I can write this as log 1 plus square root 5 divided by uh, 2, which we recognize here as the golden ratio, which is a very pleasant surprise indeed. So we have the square root of 5 minus 1 minus log 5. And we're not done yet. In fact, we can simplify, we can express this term uh, we can express this uh, square root 5 minus 1 as uh, we can express it in terms of the golden ratio. Sorry about that. Uh, you know, uh, math is a lot easier than English. So how exactly am I going to do that? Well, phi equals 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. So expanding using 1 minus the square root of 5, then we have 1 uh, minus... 5 divided by 2 uh, times 1 minus the square root of 5, correct? So this implies that phi equals negative 4 divided by 2 times 1 minus the square root of 5. And this further implies that the square root of 5 minus 1 equals the extra negatives cancelling out. This equals 2 divided by phi. So that means that infinitely nested rooted integral just sorts out quite beautifully to 2 divided by the golden ratio phi minus log golden ratio. Again, this is beautiful and a really pleasant surprise, a really pleasant surprise indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.